just talked about uh, pre-chuck checks. Uh, we made sure that uh, we had the right nozzle the captain wants. We made sure that the, you're in rescue mode. We made sure the tip lights work. Now let's start talking about fundamentals of spotting. We're going to be covering uh, Adel skill number five and six that he has out here. For all intents and purposes, we'll say the roof skill and the rescue skill. Okay. When we start talking about the roof skill, I'm going I'm to pick it up because we got to hit hit this pretty quick, guys. You're going to have three types of roofs that we're going to cover. Granted, there's a multitude of roofs, but we want to have you look at three: the flat, peaked, parapet. First one's flat. This is my uh, flat roof commercial structure here. Here's my handy dandy truck. We know by uh, studying, you have uh, two corners in theory, okay, or two corners. The actual corner right here, everybody see this is the actual corner if I set the truck to the actual corner. And then you have a line, an imaginary line that goes to a theoretical corner right here. Theoretical corner, it looks something like this, all right? And we see if we were at the theoretical corner that we would be able to what? Cover area of that building a little bit as opposed to if we were at the actual corner, it's kind of limited in some ways. So we want to think about when we're doing corner spotting, maybe a theoretical corner if we were doing rescues on multiple sides. Now, if we were going to spot to a corner, which is a good thing for two reasons. One is it allows us to see multiple sides of a structure. The second reason that we'd spot to a corner would be why do you think? Structurally, what would be going on? What's going on with a corner? Yeah. Yes, collapse zone. So the exposure to a collapse is, is, uh, is limited. So. If we're going to corner spot, this is our flat roof. Let's talk about some principles. I'm actually going to spot, in this case, within a, what, bedded length of the aerial. And we do that because of scrub area. You guys see, if we were way set way back here, we're limited scrub area. So if we hit butted, bedded length of the aerial, we don't have obstacles. And if we did have obstacles, so let's say we had cars on either side of us, we may want to, what, cheat closer to the obstacle side why is that? So we can fully extend our stabilizers on our working side. We don't work off a short jack side. Make sense? I know I'm, I'm throwing a lot at you, but I know you guys can handle it. All right, actual corner. Now it's a flat roof. Principles that we want to think about are three to five rungs above the roof. Makes sense, right? Reason is why? Absolutely. Maybe ease of egress, okay? The other reason that we might want to do that would be why? If we have one area on this side, and one aerial on that side, we can easily decipher, hey, well, I'm going to go over there and everything else, visibility. So multiple egress points is what we want. When we're setting to a flat roof, the other thing is we want to keep about six inches off of the roof line or off of the eave or off of the, where we're setting to. The reason for that, why do you think, bro? Collapse. Collapse, yeah, loading the structure. But also, if we were a torsional loading, you can see if we started torsionally loading on this aerial, that may be no bueno. What are some things that you want to think about that may be on the tip of the arrow you may need to drop down if you're really close? You may need to drop down the nozzle, right? Because you have waterway problems or that may impinge on your roof line. All right, so those are things we're thinking about. So three to five rungs, six, six inches off. Now let's talk about the next roof. You know there's things called parapets and parapets can be anywhere from three to six feet to 10 feet. How can we tell between the roof line and the top of the parapet? I, what's an indicator for us? What, what tells us? So this is a parapet wall. Scuppers. There's an example. You look over there on that uh, burn building. You see the holes right there? That's the roof line. So that's an indication that that's about, what, three foot, four foot of parapet. You'll go to places that they may be 10, 15 feet parapet wall. We want to say rule of thumb is stay away from anything six, six feet or greater. And why do you think that would be? Ease of egress. Think about how high that parapet wall is and you got to get off that ladder onto the roof, back on or whatever else. If you get on a shorter section of the parapet, maybe two, two foot, three foot, it's easier to get on and off as opposed to way here up top. Okay. Now, if you can't get away from a six foot tall parapet wall, that's where you're telling, hey, Fernside, take a roof ladder up with you so you can set it, what? Alongside the aerial to make ease of egress on and off. Okay, does that make sense? You guys see how I kind of scissored the, and that's the same thing we're gonna show you with the bucket. If you look around the corner, you'll see the bucket has attachments for a roof ladder. That's exactly what you would put that for. So when we're talking about, in this case, it's a straight stick. If we're talking about this is the bucket, so to speak, you're gonna extend the bucket over the parapet wall or over the uh, flat roof. And in case of it's a flat roof, you can actually bring it close and almost on touching it 
If it's a parapet, it's going to be above because you have a parapet wall that's sitting there. It's going to be above it. Then you're going to drop a ladder down like that to get on and off the ladder. Okay, same, same principle. Now let's talk about peak roofs. Peak roof, here you go, here's your peak roof, okay, peak roof. That's getting soggy wet. All right, here we go, peak roof, right? So now what would be the strong part of a peak roof? Um, the middle line. From the Absolutely, the ridge line would be strong. What would be another strong? The eaves? What would be another strong part? Valleys, if it was a hip roof. Okay, if there's different types of roofs that we know that we're exposed to. In this case, we'll just say Gabriel roof peaked that we would set to the actual peak itself. Make sense? All right, and then we want to size up our roof always. It might be lightweight construction, might be standard construction, because we know in certain there's some limitations and some safety factors you may consider, time of fires, impinging on it, all that stuff. All right, so that's in a nutshell on roof spotting. We're going to try to practice setting to one roof and doing one rescue if we have time. Now let's jump to Grandma, saving Grandma in the window. Everybody see Grandma in the window right there? Okay, there's Grandma in the window. If we're going to save Grandma in the window, we're going to show you a technique, for example, I don't have my gloves, but if I had my gloves, I would be driving up to Grandma's in the window. She's in the most danger first, right? I'm going to throw my glove outside where I'm passing by the window. That's maybe centered up with Grandma. I can't see that great. You see what I'm doing? Now I drive to where I centered up with my glove, and now I should be squared up with Grandma. You like that, don't you? It's all an aha moment. That's cool, man. That's some trippy, some trippy stuff. Huh? So I want you to try that, okay, because it's easier to sight on your glove than sight with grandma, possibly. Sometimes people use sidewalk uh, seams or something to do that. So we center it up to grandma. If I'm gonna come, this is the windowsill right here to grandma. This is the bottom of the windowsill. This is the rung. How we're gonna approach to grandma is we may extend out and come to grandma like so. Or we may extend above grandma and drop down to grandma. And the reason is we don't want grandma to make an attempt on the ladder, okay? Now, if you're in the bucket, it's a little bit different because you actually can see how I'm approaching. So the difference is a little bit because you're right up close and personal. So those are things we want you to practice. I find it easier to extend and move to as opposed to above, but you guys develop your own technique. All right, so once we get to grandma, we want the rung even with grandma's windowsill right here. We don't want it inside the window. Makes sense, right? Because you're now blocking an egress point. So even with the windowsill, if you can, she can get on and off. If she can't, you're going to have to go up there and help her. More importantly, it'd probably be better to have two. One inside, helping her on the ladder. Two, helping her down the ladder or whatever else. Make sense? Bucket. A little bit different with the bucket. Here's the bucket. Here's Grandma's windowsill again. Okay, bucket comes to the window. You have two options. This is the bottom of the windowsill. This is the bottom of the bucket. You make it even with the uh, bottom of the bucket. Now you can open the door come in like this or you can do the top top of the rails even with the windowsill I like this way better I think this is an easier egress now if you're with a bucket the difference is with a bucket is you're gonna actually drive and center that bucket up with her that's your center point for the rescue on the bucket that you can bring the bucket like that that way the doors are gonna come like this and can open or actually close in and goes like so all right does that make sense with grandma's window what are your questions? I'm spewing a lot out real quick, and then we may, uh, oh, let me talk about high idle and all that other good stuff. I would suggest approach the objective quickly, drop it down. So for example, in the platform, you have rabbit and turtle mode. You don't want to shake somebody out, so you want to learn to use your feathering, and what, what do I mean by there? You're going to actually engage your controller to where there's a point of actual motion or energizing or powering the system you don't want to just all or none right so feather into that point I would say move quickly and as you come to your objective drop it down to slow it down fine-tune your in the in the turtle mode or in your case maybe you drop it down at a high idle so you can fine-tune your movements all right the other thing I want you to think about if you're in a bucket there's an e-stop it's a big red button every time you work or rescuing hit that e-stop because if you hit any controls in that bucket because the controls up there you can seriously flip people in and off and all that good stuff you can get real close because it's dangerous jumping over a ledge to a ladder that is this far away but from 75 feet away that seems awful close yeah and it's hard to gauge so we'll work on some techniques for getting it the last few feet close and i'll i'll spot y'all in but uh go ahead and crank up the truck yes sir and uh and we'll get it close hey uh 
Burn side of it. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, when you pull it, when you get out of the cradle, yes, sir. Don't, go, don't start going right, left, or out until you clear the truck, okay? Yes, sir. We strap all this stuff. We got ladders bolted to the truck. Yes, sir. So I like to get 15, 20 degrees before I start swinging left or right or pushing out. Yes, sir. Cool. Go for it, man. So what we've done here with Kamer is, this is a parapet uh, roof. He is fully extended. So if we could extend any more to bring the bucket over the parapet roof, we would have done that. Since we ran out of uh, extension room on this, we went ahead and set the uh, roof ladder to make ease of egress on and off. Obviously when we do that, there's an e-stop button. We hit the e-stop button up here. Uh, then we can go ahead and get on and off the ladder. The thing that we talked about is that we would want to have these lights lit up here, and they're not lit, so that's one lesson learned on that, that we'd want to illuminate. And even the rail lights along the arrow, see there's lights that could be blinking or whatever along the rails that we'd want to illuminate. Um, so this is a way to, uh, a, a platform to get to a parapet wall or get over a parapet wall and everything. We tried to come on the low side because this parapet wall kind of has the high side. We kind of want to go on the high side, or excuse me, the low side closest to the corner. That's pretty much it, man. Okay, so every time we spot this thing, we spot three different things, which is the stabilizers, the knuckle, or the turntable, and the length of the bedded area. Okay? So every single, every single time you're spotting all three things. So, so what does the policy say about spotting? What's the best spot? Uh, corner. So, it's not positive that that's true, but especially for rescue and especially an apartment as big as ours with as many um, uh, with as many aerials as we have. You know, I mean, one. You know, I mean, if we need if we need aerials on the sides, you know, let's mm -hmm. stick them on there. You know, I mean, we got however many we got, and we got you know, anyway. 
So, especially if it's burning or if we need that many rescues or whatever, you know. Well, so a perfect corner spot is a line drawn 45 through the building with the through the knuckle with the with the truck at 45. So, so this is theoretically the perfect corner spot, okay? Uh, most of the time you're going to be a little bit one way or the other. I mean, it's perfect to be it's hard to be perfectly all the way through there. So, one side is going to be a little bit better than the other, meaning that uh, the beams, both beams will hit the windows better on one side or the other. If you know one side is going to be the, probably the operational side, if you're up that way a little more, then you have more, you know, it's easier to work on that side. I mean, if it's a pretty skinny building, you know, if the building is more like this and you have the corner spot and most of the work looks like something on this side, you know, if you're cheated over this way a little bit, yeah, you can still get the, you can still get this and these windows over here if you need to, but all of this is better. So, so what is the most stable working position of uh, of the ladder off of the truck? Well, stable position. Up. Technically, that's true, but we probably wouldn't work that working position. All four outriggers fully All way, extended. like the. This is the no. yeah. yeah, right. So that's the that is the most stable position for the ladder because you have the whole weight of the truck uh, cantilevering the, the ladder. So so this is the most stable position. The problem is is you don't get a lot of opportunities to be able to back in. So um, if you can, so the part of that is the way you approach it. So you need to come to this corner and you have a lot of room. So, if you if you do this, of course we're still the, still a length of the bedded aerial. So um, that's you know you don't have to back up very much. There are times when you know it would just involve a lot of stuff to be able to try to get that done. There's ways you know we'll do some stuff here where there's no way to get that done. Sometimes it lends itself to be able to do that. Sometimes it doesn't. So when we're trying to get to this, but again there's going to be times when all you can do is pull right here and then you know you're working the best you can off of here so remember especially for this class that properly positioned is where this will swing and not touch mm -hmm. so because um, you if you're too close you will be not properly positioned so also this is no good either so what this makes us think is you don't really know how to get it close enough to the to the building so you just got way far out because mm -hmm. so, it's just a math problem so the further you're away from the building the less high you can go so there are times probably when you have to go higher you know it's really high that you may have to get up here closer but then you're in the you have to worry about the uh, lower you know, floors the not necessarily the lower floors but stuff falling on the truck I mean, oh. if you if you got to suck it up this close falling glass and all that kind of stuff with you being on the turntable so all right, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna drive around that spot. Um, if I tell you the flat spot, that means I want you to the spot, you know, where it's you know, right to the window or the turn tower or whatever, and then corner spot. I want you to try to get 45, you know, through the knuckle of that. So, is there any questions about this part? Flat spot, corner spot, and what's the diagonal spot? Anytime you corner spot, this is, you know, you're trying to get it diagonal to the 45 of the building. Mm -hmm. So across this way through here and through the knuckle with the ladder at 45. So there'll be places we can get that done, places we can't. Okay? Yes, sir. All right. All right, so the stabilizers are good, right? No problem with that. So, so basically it's real important that every time before you set the ladder or you start messing with the stabilizers, you come over here and you step right here and you look. So because when you drove by, if it was on fire or something, you were probably looking at the fire or whatever. Especially if it's on the other side, where you don't even really get a good look. You know, it's on the opposite side of the truck that you are. Before you set the stabilizer, come back here and stand right here and look. And see if this is where you want to be. So, um, well, we're a little bit far. And it would depend on what you were going to do. So, if, if this was one victim or you were going to use this as a standpipe, I would probably back it up to where it was perfectly square. If this is a hotel or something that has a lot of windows, that we're going to be using it on you know multiple windows or around, this is probably fine. 
So, um, what do you think about the length of the bedded area? I think it's pretty close. In fact, I think you're just a tad bit far away. So almost all of these are about 10 of my steps. So. Actually, no. So not this much, but that much is actually perfect. So anywhere in this area is going to be fine. Somewhere right around in here. Now, if you, you, know, if you get out, out here, we're going to say that's too far. So of course, if it hits, it's, so that's literally perfect because you were you were that far from the from the thing so but that's but that's what you got to do is before you decide because once you set the stabilizers and get up on the turntable it's probably that's probably where it's going to be yeah. so but if the first time you see that there's wires coming across here is when you start <laughs> swinging the ladder over it's not gonna be good so just take the time to walk out here and look and if it's good then continue around and do the stabilizers. If it's not, take the 30 seconds or 45 seconds it takes to get back in there, move it a little bit, and then, you know, the whole, having it in a bad spot for two hours or four hours at an incident is not as, you know, just take the 30 seconds.